Welcome to five military strategy games you should play. This list comprises games that allow you to use military tactics, doctrine, and strategies to overwhelm, ambush, and destroy your enemy. The first one on the list is Men of War 2. It's an intense, real-time strategy game with a focus on both single and multiplayer. However, there is a massive amount of single-player content within this game. There are three playable nations, the Soviets, Americans, and the Third Reich, each with their own narrative campaigns, as well as two further historical campaigns, a dynamic conquest mode, and a skirmish-like raid mode. But the fun does not stop there. The multiplayer is intense and easily accessible for both professionals, casuals, and advanced players. One modern overlooked feature in modern gaming is cooperative play. Men of War 2 allows you to play with up to four friends through all of their single player content, or you can even dive into some PvE battalions mode. It allows you to relive those nostalgic moments that, that you lived growing up in your mother's basement or in your bedroom, just playing war games late into the night with your friends, just having a good time, tackling objectives, destroying the opponents, and just overwhelming the AI. It's one of my favorite features, and I really love playing cooperative and military strategy games lately because it reduces a lot of the stress and it removes a lot of that PvP anxiety. It also allows you to play through the story with a friend, and I think that's something that's, that's just really fun to do, and it creates a lot of nostalgic moments. Overall, it's one of my more favorite features within Men of War 2. It's something to look forward to, and it's something to see that I hope more modern games embrace cooperative gameplay. Overall, the units are historically accurate. There's tons and tons of units. I believe there's four, close to 400 different types of units. There's lots of artillery on the battlefield. You're going to be commanding aircraft. You're going to be commanding long-range artillery, short-range artillery, and objective-based game modes. So if you dive into PvP, you're going to be overwhelming the enemy with four other players, or it's 1, 2, and 3, 3v3. There's stunning visuals, captivating sound designs. Honestly, the sound design is it, it's a lot of fun. Um, it really brings you into the experience. You're not going to miss out. Um, it, it can be improved a little bit, but what sound design can't be improved? Overall, the micro is a bit intense. You can't split units like you can in like Call to Arms or I believe Men of War Assault Squad, but it's been a while since I've played those. You also can't merge units. So whenever you bring units onto the battlefield, if they kind of get reduced, they just come back as like one sole unit or three units. It's one of the limitations right now, but hopefully we see some improvements later on. But it's a nice entry into the series. It's a good game for casual players. It's a good game for more hardcore players. And if you're someone who has friends, then you can play the cooperative mode and kind of just create new, new memories, new nostalgic moments, and just have this fun, fun time playing it. A few standout features are obviously like the destructible environments, destroying buildings, overwhelming your enemies, deploying landmines, anti-personnel mines. The engineers are always fun to play, deploying bunkers and kind of creating like a beachhead or like just a forward operating point. To, um, just creates for a unique gameplay and kind of unique gameplay design. It does have full mod support. There is a map editor. There's so much content within this game and you're going to find something to enjoy here. Personally, it's kind of i've been playing it a lot i have around close to 10 hours at the time of this making this video like six to ten i've played both the betas or i played the betas i played the single player content and i had early access to the game and i've been spending the majority of my time in the multiplayer mode overall let me know what you think share the video and we're moving on to the next game welcome to one of the few games that is used by modern militaries all across the globe this is Command Modern Operations, a next generation cross-domain modern war game. You can simulate engagements from World War II all the way up to future conflicts. There are, in this video, you're seeing me use javelins, laser-guided artillery, drones to stop a Russian onslaught. But what is Command Modern Operations and what makes it so unique, so impressive, and so desired by war gamers all across the globe? Well, it's, it's scale, number one. It's both tactical, strategic, and operational. You can simulate logistics if you wanted to. You can just design scenarios all around moving weapon systems all across the globe, around the map. You can shoot down satellites. You can call in nuclear strikes. It is your virtual catch-all, and it's simulated all so, so well. If you have a thing for the Korean War, you can build scenarios, utilize aircraft from the Korean War, and simulate real life combat tactics. There's air to air combat, there's naval combat, there's submarine combat, there's ground combat. It is a 
3D Globe. There's a ton of DLC, a ton of free DLC, and there's also a ton of paid DLC for it. It's a game that just continues to grow and continues to impress me time after time. Every time I see a conflict on TV or every time I see like a new situation unfold, we're able to simulate that within command modern operation, whether that's launching massive storms or massive waves of like missile systems from C, not C-130s, but C-17s. Or if we just want to utilize a C-130 gunship and just escort special forces across the battlefield through Afghanistan while they're on a convoy, we can do that as well. We can go absolutely massive and simulate an entire invasion of Taiwan or just an entire invasion of the Eastern Front. We can do massive bombing raids in World War II where we pull all types of aircraft and just simulate these massive bombing raids. And then if we're the German player or if we're a player and we want to simulate what air defense we would need, we can put a bunch of air defense on land and create an air defense bubble allowing us to just shoot down a bunch of bombers. And I'm not even scratching the surface of what's possible in this game. You can utilize it for humanitarian things. You can just put units on the battle on the battlefield, or even in just like think of situations like Hurricane Katrina, how you need to do massive airlifts. You need to get helicopters in and pick up civilians. At one point, we we're utilizing it to or simulating um, situations on like stopping like people on the run. So if we just wanted to have some LEs or law enforcement on the map and they just come in and they execute a quick little raid there is so much to this game it's just more real more merciless and there's so much focus on the combat that takes place and we're not even talking about like the combat or the weapon systems like the t80s the eight the barrel launch atgms we're not talking about like the weapon systems within um the m1 abrams like lasers are simulated if you want to like shoot down missiles with like lasers on board aircraft that's something that's possible if you just want to do massive dr drone swarms, it's absolutely possible. This game, the world is literally at your fingertips. You can simulate almost anything you want. And there's so much realism and authenticity are the name of the game when it comes to combat mission Shock Force 2 or just the combat mission series in general. It utilizes penetration values and armor protection values based on real life data and scientific algorithms. Overall, it's an intense real-time strategy game. It can it can be played as turn-based as well. It is by far one of the most advanced strategy games on the market right now. And if you're looking for that hyper-realistic experience, then I wouldn't look no further than Combat Mission Shock Force 2. So what makes Combat Mission Shock Force 2 so different than the other entries into the series? Or why is it something that I continue to come back to? Well, let's talk about what separates it. There is ir irregular combat forces, there's spies, suicide bombers, IEDs, and other deadly tools employed in an asymmetric warfare environment. That means you're just not establishing a front and punching through just using ATGMs or random um, airstrikes. It's something that just feels more real and it feels a lot of fun. So countering that asymmetric warfare, navigating those minefields, or those IEDs on the battlefield, truly immerses you as a player in the experience, especially after 20 years of GWAT. It's one of those games that just stands out to me that I have so much fun with. Now, there's also a WeGo and a turn-based system. There is a dedicated PVP um, player base. They play, play by email. However, you can link up and try and play it through like a real-time mode. That's not something I've done, I've done though. There's heavy brigade teams, there's US striker teams, and there's all types of mechanized and armored units. And they're all detailed extremely extremely well the graphics can be improved it is a quite an it is an update of an of a previous game but overall it's just a ton a ton of fun to play personally i've had a lot of fun with combat mission i like to see where it's going i would like to see it iterate a bit faster and i would like to see a new engine and some better things for it overall it's just one of those hyper realistic war games that you're going to have that you're going to have a ton of fun with it's detailed it's innovative and i'm happy to see that it's finally on steam even though it came out on steam quite some time ago a few things that stand out is the tactical warfare at the battalion and below nice 3d destructible environments you can use combat engineers to blow holes in walls you can blow holes in walls with your tanks you can blow just holes in walls if you want to blow holes in walls and that's something that's unique to the game there's massive superstructures that you need to clear and blow your way through we're talking like five to ten story buildings and there's just units that up in those positions. And it's just a really interesting battlefield to play through. It's something that allows you to like you utilize real military tactics, real mil military techniques. 
and just manage the experience and morale of your troops. Overall, it's a ton of fun. It's got that unmatched realistic physics, unmatched ballistics, and battlefield effects. The explosions are a bit are a bit funny, but those could always be improved. Um, there's a ton. There's 20 standalone scenarios. There's a campaign. There's small training campaigns, and there's a ton of DLC for you. The game's been out for quite some time, and the Syrians have up to 41 vehicles and 35 assorted arms. There are ATGMs, so you do have those systems to counter that. It's one of the most realistic war games on the market right now, next to Command Modern Operations. And if you're looking for that realistic war game experience, then look no further than Combat Mission Shock Force 2, or really any of the Combat Mission games. It's a game for you. Check it out. Intense, authentic, and realistic. Welcome to Warno, a new dimension of warfare. Warno is a Cold War air war game focusing on a hypothetical World War III scenario. It has five Army General campaigns upon release that focus on NATO Syntag as well as the Warsaw Pact Central Group of Forces area of responsibility in 1989. You'll control hundreds of units on the battlefield. You'll launch massive offensives and use combined arms doctrine to overwhelm your opponent. The single player content has been slowly rolling out and has been a ton an absolute ton of fun to play, and I'm excited to get the game at full release. Overall, it's one of those casual experiences or ca more casual war games that will have you begging for more. And it has a dedicated single player as well as a dedicated multiplayer player base. The game is so much fun. It's a spiritual successor to war game, and I've had a ton of fun playing it on my own. There's so many standout features. I really enjoy just the ability to control large amounts of aircraft, as well as conduct combined arms operations, especially when you get that breakthrough feeling when, especially that breakthrough feeling when you've like punched through your opponent's defensive line, and now you're just on this like crusade to their next objective. It creates very fun, very nostalgic moments that are hard to recreate in other war games. Personally, it's just one of those games that I keep coming back to with each update. However, I've started to pick it up and play it more casualty, casually in my off time. Um, Overall, the research is fun. It gets balanced. It's primarily a single player game. But like I said earlier, there is a bunch of multiplayer content. And I know that's something that's that people just keep coming back for. So there's going to be, I believe, six nations aligned with the aligned to the Warsaw and NATO Pact. They can be the French, West Germans, United Kingdom, and the US. So obviously the Soviets will be the Soviet Union and East German from con from conscripts to main battle tanks to mobile SAM systems, self-propelled artillery, scout helicopters, strike aircraft, and fast interceptors. Warno Nation has its unique arsenal of vehicles, planes, and soldiers. And that's something that really stands out to me in this game. Every division kind of plays different. Every nation kind of plays different. Whether it's utilizing the gazelle or using using the leopards, the challengers, and just storming the beaches or just fighting through intense cityscapes, it's just one of those fun games. I I'm excited for release. I'm excited to dive into more 10v10. It, they've definitely made it a lot easier for casual players. You can kind of set doctrines for your units, and those doctrines will either tell your units to automatically engage. So they've really reduced the amount of micro needed for new players. I would like to see that system improved upon, and I would like to see it just improved. So you can think of like that doctrine system as like tack AI and combat mission. So you don't always need to be right on top of your units. They will engage. So let me know if you picked up Warno. Dark, gritty, and immersive. Welcome to Call to Arms, Gates of Hell. It takes place during the great patriotic war fought between Germany and the USSR. The RTS will take you from June 1941 until the end of the war, 1945. Call to Arm Gates of Hell primarily focuses on single player content and it has a dynamic campaign as well as PVE, PVP, and co op. You'll be able to rebuild those intense, nostalgic multiplayer moments with your friends and enemies. It's a ton of fun to play and I really enjoy the dynamic campaign or I really enjoy just the PVE content. I don't know how alive the PVP actually is though. It's one of those more realistic war games, it has that classic top down feel. And it's just a ton of fun taking command of units and just managing the battlefield in this really dark, really gritty, really fun World War II war game. Conquest or Dynamic Campaign offers single player and co-op modes to play with your friends. Both modes allow you to compose your own army, research new units, and just achieve that strategic advantage on the battlefield. 
The, the dynamic campaign can range from short, quick battles to an unlimited campaign length. This game will keep you coming back. It keeps bringing you back. It keeps bringing me back. It's so, so much fun to play. And it's one of those games that's highly requested on the channel. The PvP and PvE um, offers more variety of maps from 1v1 to 4v4. You can use doctrines that these allow you to choose special units on the battlefield that fit your own unique and individual play style. We're talking like early, mid, and late World War II equipment. Single campaigns take place in historical locations that were painstakingly recreated and immersive. It's 12 single player missions that can be replayed that can be played with friends in a co-op environment. 30 PVE and PVE maps and a PVE dynamic campaign in which you can develop your own army and fight an ever-changing war across a big collection of maps. It's one of those games that stands out. There's over 250 vehicles, 100 heavy weapons at your disposal, and just so much content just at your fingertips. And it's just one of those games I just truly enjoyed. The air support's so much fun. The off-map artillery, creating these fun combined arms tactics, just doing these fun breakthroughs, utilizing um, like Panzerfaust to destroy enemy tanks, and just microing your unit all the way down to the unit level to just maybe get that that one tactic or one one thing you need to like break through and punch through that front line. Overall. You should check it out. And if you enjoy this type of video, please share it with your friends, like, comment, subscribe. I really enjoy making these types of videos for you guys. And if you have any suggestions, leave them down below and let me know what you think of this video. Share it, share it. YouTube loves it, share it.